Hello everyone, it's Daniel from TechMind Factory. In this video, we are going to discover how to authenticate users with UAE Pass. Before we jump into practical demo, as always, a little bit of theory. Let's first answer this question. What is UAE Pass? UAE Pass is the first secure national digital identity for citizens, residents and visitors in United Arab Emirates. It enables them to access many online services across various sectors, in addition to providing features such as signing and verifying documents digitally. So what are some of the UAE Pass capabilities? First of all, secure sign-in. We can log in and sign up to many websites and applications with one user account. We can sign and verify documents digitally. And also we can request and share official documents with various partners. In this video specifically, we are going to focus on login or user authentication with UAE Pass. UAE Pass supports OAuth 2 standard and enables users to register and authenticate themselves in a system integrated with service providers across United Arab Emirates. UAE Pass provides mobile applications for iOS and Android platforms. UAE Pass mobile application is a digital identity service provider for secure online identification. It is an easy and safe service that gives the users access to various authentication and signature services within the United Arab Emirates. There are two possible ways to integrate authentication with UAE Pass. The first one is web. So users authenticate using the system browser. Single sign-on works here, so when user opens any other application secure with UAE Pass, user is automatically authenticated. And another possible way is to use mobile approach. So in this approach, authentication is handled in the native mobile application, which uses a WebView UI component for integrating the OAuth 2 flow. So not the system browser on the device, like on iOS, for instance, with Safari. In this video, we are going to see how to implement authentication with UAE Pass using the web approach. So let's explain web authentication flow. There is a user, there is web application secure with UAE Pass. Obviously, this application is available through the user's browser and there is UAE Pass. So now, when user is trying to access this web application, user has to click login button and user is redirected to the UAE Pass authorization endpoint. And this is basically the login page. And on this login page, user has to provide unique identifier, which is email. Once the email is provided by the user, there is a number displayed on the login screen. We will see it during the demo. And also, user, is, user has the notification displayed in the UAE Pass mobile application. So in this case, UAE Pass mobile application displays three different numbers. And user has to select the proper number displayed on the login page. Once the user accepts the authentication operation, this information is passed to the UAE Pass and UAE Pass returns the access code or authorization code to the web application. And as in the typical OAuth flow, web application has to exchange this code for an access token. So web application calls token endpoint of UAE Pass and exchanges this uh, OAuth code or authorization code for the access token. So this information with the access token is returned to the client application and user can start using this specific client application secured with UAE Pass. However, there is one important fact worth knowing. UAE Pass returns OPAC access token, not the JSON Web access token. It means that application has to make additional call to UAE Pass to obtain information about the user profile. So as we can see in this slide, this is the response returned from the UAE Pass after successful user authentication. There is OPAC token return. 
There is no information about the user, so we have to make this additional call to retrieve information about the authenticated user. So how to get information about the authenticated user? We have to call user info endpoint of UAE pass with the access token included in the authorization header. After that, UAE pass user info endpoint will return information about the user profile. That includes information about the first name, last name, email, phone number, and all other details about the user. Okay, great. So now let's talk about the scenario where web application would like to call protected resource, so the API, on behalf of authenticated user. So again, there is a user, there is client application, our web application, there is UAE pass that acts as identity provider, and there is a resource server, API. So the case is that once user completes authentication flow you know, with UAE pass, obviously web application receives an access token. That's what we learned from the previous diagram. So now this web application is calling protected resource, so the API, with the access token. So now what is happening on the resource server side, on the API side, this API calls UAE pass to get an access token for itself using resource server client credentials. So UAE pass issues an access token for the resource server. So now the resource server has its own access token. So now next this resource server or API calls verify API on the UAE pass side to verify client's app access token. So the one that was sent from the client app to the resource server. UAE pass is validating uh, this token and is returning a verification response. And this is something what is called token introspection. So now, once the API receives this response from the UAE pass, API can verify the token details and either allow or deny access. One last important detail is about the logout. So UAE Pass provides logout URL. So it's not enough to terminate session on the application side, like deleting an access token. User should be redirected to the logout URL provided by UAE Pass. So service provider should make sure to log out the user from UAE Pass when user clicks on logout button from the service provider web portal. So that's very important. When you implement UAE Pass authentication, please remember to also use the logout URL. Great, so now it's time to see it in action. Here is my web application created with Blazor server. This application is secure with UAE Pass. It's worth knowing that UAE Pass provides two environments, test and production. For this demo purpose, obviously I'm using test environment. When I click reports tab, we can see that I have to authenticate first to access this section. So I will click login button and I'm redirected to the login page provided by UAE Pass. There, I have to provide my unique identifier, which can be Emirates ID, email or phone. So in this case, I will provide my email address and once it's provided, I will click login button. As we can see, here is the number displayed on the screen. So now I have to open UAE Pass mobile application on my iOS device and select this specific number. So let me show you the print screen from my UAE Pass mobile application. So this is the login notification displayed in the UAE Pass mobile application. As we can see, there are three different numbers displayed and user has to select the proper number displayed on the login page. So in this case, 15. Great, so now I'm selecting 15 in my UAE Pass mobile application and I click confirm button. And after a few seconds, I'm successfully authenticated. As we can see, there is information that I signed in as Daniel K and here is my email displayed. Now, when I try to access reports tab, we can see that right now there is reports view for authenticated user displayed. Great. So now I'm successfully authenticated and I can use this web application. 
Now let's see some details related to the source code. Okay, so here is this web application project open in the Visual Studio. A couple of important things. First of all, we have to provide the configuration for the UAE pass. So it's happening here. As we can see, there is UAE pass configuration class. And this class contains all the properties required to integrate successfully with UAE pass. Like client ID, client secret, authorization endpoint, token endpoint, user information endpoint, logout endpoint, and so on and so forth. All those details can be obtained in the developer portal provided by UAE Pass. Once we have those details loaded, so once this configuration is in place, we can enable authentication with UAE Pass. So here we use cookie authentication scheme uh, in this source code, in this application. And let's discuss a few important details about uh, this authentication with UAE Pass. So, first of all, as you remember, I mentioned that UAE Pass is using token introspection to make sure that we can validate whether the token is still valid. So here, in this event called onValidatePrincipal, we want to validate an access token issued by UAE Pass, whether it's still valid. So we can get this access token, extract this access token basically, and with this access token, we call introspect endpoint provided by UAE Pass. And to make it simple, if UAE Pass will return bad request, it means that there is something wrong with the token or token expired, we challenge the user to authenticate once again. Another thing is that once we configure OAuth here, so as you remember, we have to provide all those, config, all those parameters like authorization endpoint, token endpoint, user info endpoint, client ID and client secret. We have to also add a couple of more things. So first of all, UAE pass requires ACR values to be provided in the authorization request. So we have to provide it from the configuration. Again, this is provided by UAE pass in the developer portal. And also important fact is that once user is successfully authenticated, we want to grab information about the user. And for instance, display this uh, email address in the top right corner in the application. But as you remember, the case is that UAE Pass returns opaque tokens, not JSON web tokens. So application cannot look directly into the access token to get information about the user. So to check this information, we have to call user information endpoint. So basically what we do here in this on creating ticket event, we are calling user information endpoint with this access token return from UAE pass in the authorization header. And we obtain UAE pass user profile. Let me open this class. So as we can see, there are all the attributes related to user profile, like unique identifier, first name, last name, mobile or email. So once we have this data, we can basically extract information, like some properties like email and set it under the name claim for the application. So that's why when user is successfully authenticated, we see user email in the top right corner in the application. If there is something wrong with the data, just to make it simple, we are just displaying unknown in the top right corner in the application. Last thing is, as you probably remember, that I mentioned that to successfully log out the user from the application, it, it, it's not enough to just terminate session on the application side, like delete the access token. We have to also call logout URL from the UAE pass. So that's why you can see that here we map the logout URL and we call logout URL on the UAE pass side. And then we use HTTP context sign out async method. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next videos.